Hey there, everybody. Don Evans here from WatchReport.com. Hope you are doing well and having a good day. Today I have the Panserna P7 Pilot. Now this is a brand new brand that has not officially launched yet, so this is a prototype. And uh, this is their first model, the P7 Pilot. Now I have a lot of information to go over, and unfortunately I already recorded the audio for this video, but I never actually turned on the sound for the microphones. So that was a 13 minute video. I don't know what this one's gonna be yet, but uh, hopefully this video will be better than the first one I did. But if not, and I miss anything, there's gonna be a full review at watchreport.com. I'll have the link in the description below. And you can always ask me a question. Uh, as always, I encourage you to ask me questions down in the comment section and let me know what you think of this piece. So this piece has been you know, quite polarizing when I've been posting the pictures of it on social media. And that is definitely about the, uh, you know, bulbous style case and definitely the lugs. And of course, we're going to talk about that all here in the review. Let me go ahead and uh, give you a little background. So Panserna means armored in Polish. And the reason that the owner, who is out of Ohio here in the United States, decided to use that name is because, one, it means armored, and two, because his mother was Polish. So he thought it was, you know, a good choice for a brand. And where the armored comes in, now this is a bead blasted ca uh, case, as you can see, but the production model will also have an, uh, a hardened ion plating uh, supposedly eight times harder than stainless steel. So that's where the whole armored comes in. And plus this is like that military trench style watch, World War II trench style watch with those type of lugs, with the wired lugs. So uh, I, I see where he is going with this. Now I don't know what future models of the brand are going to be, but I imagine they'll all be uh, either military style or all have a hard coating, etc. Now, your pre-order is going to be $519. That is the pre-order price, which is $100 off. Your, re uh, your regular or retail price will be $619. And now, if you're looking for pre-order information, I'm going to have to update that at a later date. The website is still under construction. We're looking at a few weeks away. I'm recording this at the end of February. So probably a few weeks into March is when the website will launch. The pre-order is not going to be until April. And again, when after uh, this review is up for a while, uh, within two months or so, I'll go back in and I'll try and update the information in the description or a pinned comment and over at watchreport.com with the information on how to order. So let me go ahead and give you all the specifications. You're looking at a 40 millimeter case. It is a bead blasted case with the IN plating. That's what it'll have. 20 millimeter lug width. 13 millimeters height. Now that's going to increase slightly with the production model because it will have a single dome sapphire crystal with an AR coating come production. This one, the prototype has a flat crystal. 49 millimeter lug to lug. And let me specify, I measured that myself. Uh, the owner of the company actually gave me a nice printout of all the specifications and everything, uh, which was a nice touch. I wish uh, more companies and, and brand owners would do that. It makes my job a little bit easier. But I measured it myself just because I was looking at them. They look and appear like it would be longer than 49 millimeters, but it is in fact 49 millimeters from the end tip to end tip of the lugs. Eight millimeter signed screw down crown, solid engraved case back. You're looking at super luminova on the hands number and markers, 200 meters water resistant. It is going to be a Miyota 9015 automatic movement, no Seiko NH35 here. And you're going to get two straps. You're going to get this green canvas strap and the black uh, webbed NATO, the uh, nylon NATO. Now, the buckle that you see on the black nylon NATO is going to be on the green canvas as well. Again, these are prototypes, not full production models, uh, pretty close to what you're gonna get, but not fully done yet. Uh, that'll come uh, with full production. Uh, you're also going to get a uh, canvas travel watch roll. So, like I said, the, the design here has been kind of polarizing. And uh, I just want to let you know, I really like this watch and I want to be very specific. It is probably not a watch that I would wear 
on an everyday basis. And there's two reasons for that. One is it's just not normally a style of watch that I would wear on a regular basis, but it is something that I would pull out when I want to wear something a little bit different and very, very casual. Two, I am not a big fan of one-piece straps, whether they be NATOs or Zulus or whatever. I never have been. I know lots of people are. It's just not for me. And because of that, I went ahead, and I'm going to show you on video here, I went ahead and put it on a uh, two-piece rubber strap. Now I don't have, I really wanted to put it on a 20 millimeter leather strap and I searched and I searched and I searched and I did not have a 20 millimeter strap. I thought I did, I don't, to put it on. So I took the trap, a uh, uh, 20 millimeter Tropic rubber that I had from another watch and I put it on here just so you can see what it looks like on a normal two piece strap. And by the way, as you can see throughout the video, it is regular spring bars. It is not a solid bar like say Bertucci watches. It is a regular spring bar inside those thick wire lugs. So you can see, I, I think to me personally, it looks a little better on the two piece strap. Um, it doesn't seem to, I don't know, hang as long. It's not as long on the wrist because with those wire lugs and how long they are perceived to be, just the visual of them being so long, and then with the canvas NATO strap, it's very, very long on the wrist. And I think a two-piece strap takes that down a little bit. I would love to see a brown leather strap, uh, especially with this black dial and those gray hands. I think it would look really nice. And maybe, in my personal opinion, I would love to see this come with the gray canvas uh, NATO and then like a two-piece leather strap. That's just my opinion and my advice uh, to the owner of Pansera. Maybe he could change that up before the pre-order actually goes live. Now, this is going to come in other colors. This is the black dial, and you will see that not only did it has, uh, does it have that gray hour, minute, and second hand, but you could see that gray outline around the numbers uh, of the dial and the markers of the dial. And these are not a sandwich dial. These look like sandwich dial. They're just printed in a way that make it appear like it's a sandwich, but it is not. They are printed. But I do like that contrast gray coating on the hands and around the markers and everything. It's not just your white or your black or applied chrome or whatever. It really gives it a distinct look. It's also going to come in a green, a blue, a gray, and a desert tan. I think the desert tan would look uh, really nice as well. So as I said, very polarizing. Yes, you are taking the design inspiration. You took the design inspiration of a World War II, uh, you know, a World War II trench watch, military uh, style trench watch, and you have those wired lugs. And the case, that round case, yes, it's a little kind of thick and chunky. He's a little chunky guy. Uh, don't make fun of him for it, you know? He's, he's defensive. But it is, all joking aside, it's a thick, chunkyish style round case. And then those wire lugs are thicker than you would normally see. I like it because it's like almost like a modernized version. It's an updated version. And from a review perspective, I think it's refreshing. I really like it. I really love the shape and the feel of this crown. It's very solid, unscrews and screws back down into the case very, very easily. It's just a very confident feeling when you're using the crown. Um, like I said, the dial here, really love the dial layout. It's pretty clean. I love the way he's done the printing on the numbers of the dial and everything. And uh, those gray hands against that black dial is a really nice touch. It just, you just don't see that customization. By the way, everything except the movement really and the straps are completely custom. Everything he had done from the ground up. So this is not a catalog or off the shelf case. It was all custom done. Uh, the hands, the dial, everything, the crown. Uh, case back, as you know, I'm a big sucker for a nice uh, engraved or stamped case back. This is no different. Love this. And I also love that we don't have to look at the very kind of plain and mundane Miyota 9015. I'm just not a fan of seeing any you know, movement in an exhibition case back just because it's an automatic. I think the movement should be intriguing or look pretty, whatever. Miyota 15, 9015s don't do it for me. Uh, overall, uh, I, I just really like this watch. As I said, I like it for different reasons though. And it, it wouldn't be probably the first watch I would run out of buy or the first watch that I'm going to put on every week. You know, it, 
It'd be specific occasions that I personally would wear this watch. It is a very casual piece, but I really, really do like it for a lot of different reasons. Most of all, that it's refreshing to see something different and new. Uh, you've seen here on video, uh, the loom is absolutely excellent as well. I really don't have a lot to complain about. As I said, the only thing I'd like to see versus the changes that he's already gonna have for pr the production version is I'd like to see two-piece leather straps. I, I don't think that the black uh, nylon NATO is very comfortable. It's very stiff. It's just not, I don't know. I've been wearing it on the green canvas and then once I put it on the Tropic, I kind of left it on there for a day or two just because I like two-piece straps more. But uh, let me know what you guys think of this down in the uh, down in the comment section below. As I said, I will up update the information with the pre-order and everything at that when it goes live. I'll put out a notice on our social media as well that the uh, it is now up for pre-order and everything. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section. Let me know what you think of it. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you on the next one.